In this video, we are going to graph the inverse cosecant and identify the domain and range. We begin with the original graph of cosecant. Now, cosecant is a function because it passes the vertical line test. That means if I draw any vertical line to the graph, it will only intersect the graph one time. However, for a function to have an inverse, it must be one to one. In other words, it must pass the horizontal line test. This means if I draw any horizontal line to the graph, it will only intersect the graph one time. Clearly, we see that cosecant is not one to one. It fails the horizontal line test, but mathematicians are clever. Mathematicians decided to restrict the domain from negative pi over two to zero union zero to pi over two. In this way, the graph passes the horizontal line test and thus cosecant has an inverse. So we restrict the domain from negative pi over two to zero, but not actually including zero, and from zero to pi over two. Let us redraw the graph of inverse cosecant with the restricted domain. So I'm going to come here Here we have one, here we have negative one, here we have pi over two, and here we have negative pi over two. And we're going to draw our graph from negative pi over two to zero, but not actually including zero. And from zero, not actually including zero to pi over two. The following are the steps for graphing inverse cosecant. Step one, draw a neat number quadrant. It is important to note that pi over two is approximately 1.6. So we want to put pi over two somewhere in between the numbers one and two. So that's what we're going to do. So I'm going to come and draw a number quadrant. And here I have one, Two would be about right here, so pi over two would be about here. Here we have negative one. Negative two would be about here, so negative pi over two would be here. And let's do the same along the y-axis. Step two, draw the line y equals x. So I'm just going to put a few points. And connect the dots here. And that's y equals x. Step three, draw the restricted graph of cosecant. So I'm just going to say we have a point at pi over 2, 1. We have a vertical asymptote at x equals 0. And we have a point at negative pi over 2, negative 1. 
and I'm just going to put that on my graph. So pi over two, one. And my vertical asymptote is already there. And we have negative pi over two, negative one. And we have a graph that swings out like this. And it comes out like this. I'm just going to draw it further down here. Step four, swap the X and Y values. So we have a point at pi over two, one, so it will become one pi over two. We have a vertical asymptote at x equals zero, so it will become a horizontal asymptote at y equals zero. We have a point at negative pi over two, negative one, so this will become negative one, negative pi over two. So I'm just going to put that on the graph. We have one pi over two, so one pi over two is here. We have our horizontal asymptote at y equals zero. There it is. And we have another point at negative one, negative pi over two. So negative one, negative pi over two is about right here. Step five, draw the new graph by reflecting about the line y equals x. So I'm going to come here and I'm going to reflect. And I'm going to come here and I'm going to reflect. Now let us separate the new graph from the old one so we can get a good look at the graph of inverse cosecant. So I'm just going to come here. And I'm going to put one, negative one, and we have pi over two, and negative pi over two. And we have the point one pi over two, and the point negative one, negative pi over two, and our graph is going to, let me extend the graph a little bit, and it's going to swing this way, and swing that way. And here we have the graph of y equals cosecant inverse of x. Now it is easy for us to identify the domain and range of inverse cosecant. The domain is from negative infinity to negative one, union from one to infinity. And notice that we're using a set of brackets. That means that we are actually including the negative one and the positive one. And the range is from negative pi over two to zero, union from zero to pi over two. Note that we have a bracket at negative pi over two. That means we are actually including negative pi over two. We have a parentheses at zero. That means we're not actually including the zero. Similarly, it is the same for the next zero. We're not actually including the zero. 
and we have a bracket at pi over 2. That means we are actually including pi over 2. If you were to look at this on the unit circle, here we have negative pi over 2 and pi over 2. And we're not actually including the 0, but we can have all the values that come very close to zero. And we are using the right region of the unit circle. And that is how you grab inverse cosecant and identify the domain and range. Thank you so much for watching and always remember that you are awesome.